Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we're talking about what is my favorite tech line battleship, the Tier 9 American battleship, the Iowa. The Iowa was, of course, naturally being an American, the first ship I grinded to in this game when I downloaded it. Shoot, what was it, five, six years? Yeah, six years ago now. And man, it's, um,. It's actually pretty impressive how the Iowa has held up over the years, despite being, of course, high tier in the current meta. I mean, good lord, just trying to record this video, the matches I had were terrible. The one you're watching right now is definitely the most entertaining out of all the ones that that, that I had this evening. Um, but, yeah, high tier is, yeah, super ships were a mistake. I had a game with four super ships aside, and it was a Super CV it was a Eagle in the United States, Satsuma, Hanover, Edgar, and I think it was another Edgar as well. And sh God, man. Ah, you guys think submarines make the players passive. Good God. But anyway, moving on for that, that's another video for another time. The Iowa. So the Iowa is a Tier 9 American battleship. She is, a, of course, a real still historical ship. I myself have been to the Wisconsin in real life, and it is awesome seeing... An Iowa class in real life. In game, like, I mean, they're, they're one of the larger battleships in game, but the way that the game is kind of scaled and stuff, and the, the camera angles and stuff, you think the Iowa's like a decently sized battleship, nothing massive, but then you get to one in real life, and good lord, these ships are absolutely huge. Makes you think, you know, how big would the Montanas have been, and then, like, how big is the, the Yamatos in real life? It, it's really impressive. And really something to see and something I would highly encourage you guys to uh, get to if you live near one. I had to drive 16 hours to go see the Wisconsin, but it was absolutely worth it. But anyway, the Iowa. She is a lot of fun to play. I like the American Battleship formula. It's held up really well over the years. And the ship still does well despite some of the matches that I had. I mean, the, the ship was still pretty much finishing in top five in the match that I had except for one match that ended in like freaking I think the game time was like seven minutes and change <laughs> so I didn't really have time to do anything in that battle but she still does really well for me of course I'm a battleship main and played thousands of battles and battleships but still she's still very comfortable to play she has a very nice set of traits and consumables that help her in today's world warships and those that that is what we're going to be taking a look at today so Starting off, let's start off with her armor. Well, it is the American Battleship armor scheme, all or nothing. She has a 32mm bow. Her upper belt is 38. Her torpedo protection is 32. Her stern is 32, along with her stern and bow deck being 32. Center deck is 38. And if you strip away all of that armor, her citadel is right at the waterline. This is one thing that did change. Um, what was it, a few years ago, they did lower the Citadel of the Iowa, the Montana, and the the Missouri down to where it's just at the waterline now. So, that being said, she still isn't the hardest ship in the world to Citadel. She's much more difficult to Citadel than, let's say, the North Carolina. But, with it being at the waterline and not far below the word line, not having turtle back, when you are turning, you can and will be citadel And of course, too, from extreme long ranges with plunging fire, you can get citadel as well. And that is something that has increased at higher tier. The amount of large caliber guns that can easily snipe out to, you know, 20 plus kilometers. There's plenty of those right now, so you do have to be on the watch out for that. Plus, being coded in 32, you're going to be eating a lot of HE. Now, it's not quite as bad as, let's say, the French battleships, because you get that 38 millimeter plating, but still the nose, stern deck, bow deck, stern, all 32, so you will be eating plenty of HE there. Now, moving on from the armor, her survivability, she does have 71, I'm sorry, 79,000, thinking of a cruiser, 79,000 HP at tier 9, which is a very healthy tier 9 battleship, and 25% torpedo damage reduction. And her gun, she has 9 of the American 16 inch guns with the 50 caliber bell barrel, not the 45 caliber barrel 
that the North Carolina has. So that means that the shells are coming out of quite a bit faster. The HE shells are coming out at 820 meters a second. The AP cell shells are coming out at 762 meters a second, which is still slow. Don't get me wrong, that's still slow compared to a lot of the other battleships at Tier 9, but it's a lot better than the North Carolina. The North Carolina and the Kearsarge, they both have a 45 caliber barrel, which means that the barrel is shorter than the Iowa's. So the shells travel a little bit slower, 702 meters a second to be exact. Which means once you get out to longer ranges, it's really difficult to aim because you have to lead them by so much at those ranges. But now at the Iowa, the Iowa can comfortably shoot out to about 18, 19 kilometers. Once you get in the 20 plus range, that's very much in the iffy area with the Iowa. But of course, with enough practice and such, you can get used to it. But still, I mean, when you get to like 20 kilometers plus just the amount of flight time that these shells have the enemy if they're paying attention will have plenty of time to maneuver however you shouldn't really be playing the iowa that far out the iowa is much more of a mid-range battleship like like all the american battleships are they all perform very well at mid-range they are not snipers the, don't don't go into this line thing that these lines that, that, that this line is a bunch of snipers. They are not. They are mid-range battleships. That is what they are best at, and that's where you would get the most out of them. Uh, but speaking about the guns, before we move on, uh, the guns reload in 30 seconds flat. There's nice 9 6 inch guns that reload in 30 seconds flat. They have a 36 second 180 time with the build that I have on it. 294 meter dispersion at 27.1 kilometers. So... The thing about the American battleships, and I, I'm kind of sad that they don't do this anymore, or that it seems that the American battleships are the only one that had something like this on it. I know a couple of lines, like the Soviet battleships, they can't fit the range module on them, but none of the lines have like their own special modules anymore. Uh, the American battleships get the special artillery plotting room modules, which um, goes in the last mod slot. It gives them an 11% boost to their dispersion. But in exchange for it, you can't fit the, um, what is it, aiming system mod 1 mod in the third slot. You get artillery plotting room mod 1 instead, which gives you a 16% buff to your main battery gun range. That's why this Iowa has a 27 kilometer range. Are you ever going to actually need 27 kilometers of range? Every now and then, maybe. Is it going to be useful? Um, maybe. In the situation that I'm in here, in... Well, not, not not in this game, but that I was in, in the game that I just got out of, there was an Eagle, the enemy super uh, carrier, that was sitting at like 23 kilometers, hiding behind an island, and he wasn't moving because he was busy flying his planes. Because he wasn't moving, I didn't have the range to actually reach out and slap him and citadel him, and thankfully he stayed spotted long enough to where I could finish him off. In that case, it's very, 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 very much useful. But in most cases, honestly, no. At the same time, too, I'm not sure exactly what you'd want to take in the third mod slot besides this um, plotting room. You could take main battery mod 2, sure, that gets your turrets traversing a little bit faster. AA guns mod 1, I mean, maybe 20% buff to your AA sector preparation time. Eh, doesn't really seem like it's worth it. Secondary battery mod 1, not on the Iowa. And then again, main battery mod 2. I mean, your turrets already traverse fairly quickly. Uh, 36 seconds with the commander skill so it's kind of like why not you know the the extra range is nice to be able to reach out and touch some some ship at that range sure but again unless they're standing still not paying attention you probably won't hit them all right the he has a maximum damage of 5700 with a 36 percent chance of causing a fire on the target it can pin 68 millimeters of armor like i said it does come out the tubes at 120 meters a second the AP does a maximum damage of 13,500, and this is the glorious super heavy American AP with the Mark 8 shell. So this is 16 inch shells that are really hitting like 17 inch shells, or eight, even 18 inch shells. These shells pack one hell of a punch, and in fact in real life, the Mark 8 a, uh, super heavy a, AP shell that the Iowa's fired was comparable to the 18 inch shell that the Yamato fired because, again, it's the super heavy AP shell. So food for thought right there but yes it, it this does mean that 
This shell packs one hell of a punch, like I've talked beforehand about the uh, super heavy American AP. And having this on 16 inch guns is absolutely devastating. It's one of the reasons why the Montana, despite having some very large caliber ships, she's still very much in like the, the, the front runner for a lot of the um, broadside weight comparisons. When you look at the, the weight of the um, broadsides of the tier 10 ships, she used to be number one, but that has since been eclipsed however she's still way up there with the forerunners for that so some lovely ap it does travel a bit slower and that's the reason why these shells are so slow if they weren't super heavy they should have a comparable speed to the he but they are heavier so they of course travel slower so you can absolutely slap the living crap out of anything that slips up and shows you broadside and also the slower velocity does mean that you can pin cruisers a lot easier than you would with other ships because with the higher velocity speeds, the shells pass through the cruisers a lot easier with battleship caliber guns, of course. But since these are going a little bit slower, and they're the super heavy AP shells, sometimes magic happens and you remove 30k from a cruiser's side. It is beautiful when it does. Alright, so um, her AA, it, it's pretty decent. She has an A rating of 90. You know, back in the day before the CV re rework, I was one of the ships that you know most CV players tended to avoid, but of course with with the day's AA doesn't really mean much. I mean, sure, if the CV slip shop and eats a couple of your flak salvos, that it's going to suck for them. But I wouldn't say she's an AA death machine, but definitely on the better side. Maneuverability, the Iowa with the speed flag can go 34.7 knots, which is darn fast. She does have a turning circle race of 920 meters. Again, she's a massive ship. And a rudder shift time is 17.1 seconds. Consumant with the commander skill and the module will get you down to 12.7, which is very nice to have a ship this fast with a consumant that low. For a consumable, she gets her choice of fighter or spotter. She gets the improved American battleship heal, which regens 625 HP per second. It is active for 30.8 seconds. It has a reload time of 76 seconds. You can get five charges of that with the battleship superintendent skill. And then you also get the American damage con party, which is active in 22 seconds and regens, I'm sorry, and cools down in 76 seconds. So with that heal and that damage con, you get the ability to tank quite a lot more than you think the ship would be able to, especially looking at her armor scheme. That heal is so nice. I'm so glad they gave that to the higher tier American battleships. Well, no, well, the North Carolina kind of got it. It's not as good as the Iowa's, but it's still pretty good. Um, what was that, two years ago? This was just such a nice touch of life support for the American battleships, especially with the introduction of more and more HE spammy ships and more and more large, large caliber guns at high tier. You have this ability now to really just tank through some of that and just brute force your way through it with this heal and that damage con. It's not a conqueror heal, don't get me wrong, but it's much better than the average battleship heal. And the damage con runs for 22 seconds which is your bloom time. It's the amount of time it takes for your bloom to decrease. So you can fire, if you get set on fire, you can pop it. And for the entire duration of your that, uh, that it takes for your bloom to wind down, no one can set another fire on you. So that means you can easily go undetected as long as nothing's in your uh, detection range. And plus two, if even, even if you're not trying to disengage, if you're pushing, 22 seconds when it comes down to drive-bys of battleships, that's not entirely outside the realm of covering the entire drive-by of an enemy battleship. Which means that their secondaries won't set a fire on you. If they have torpedoes and they throw some at you and it's not enough to kill you, their flooding won't be able to get set so they can't flood you out after the drive-by. It's a very nice set of consumables to have. So, all in all, the Iowa is a fast ship with some hard-hitting guns that do take some use to get uh, so, so, some... Well, quite a few battles to get used to is what I'm trying to say because of their rather long flight times and, of course, the American Shell Arcs too. But she is an excellent ship, in my opinion. A tech line ship, a free ship. The best way to play this ship is at mid-ish range. She's not a close-range brawler, don't get me wrong, but definitely from like 15 kilometers in is this ship's sweet zone. Get on those flanks, find the sides of the enemy ships, shove your 16-inch American Super Heavy AP into them, make them cry and suffer. She's also a really good kiter because her gun angle is actually pretty nice and her armor is, of course, more than thick enough to be able to 
deal with anything when she's angled and she's speedy so she can get out of those situations quite well as long as you're stirred into the cap and she's quite maneuverable too despite being a massive ship so don't sell in straight lines with this ship by the way guys i know she's fast and you might get lost in that but don't sell in straight lines look out for those dds they know you're an american battleship you're probably a newer player in their minds at least and they're going to throw their torpedoes at you throw them off turn use your rudder because again American Battleship means new player in the North American server, and all the and all the sub well, the submarine commanders know it too. All the submarine destroyer commanders are going to be going after you, so make sure to stay aware for that. And also, don't be afraid to switch to HE in the Iowa. There's so many ships that her AP can't overmatch at higher tier, of course. So don't be afraid to switch to HE if something's about tanking you. It's a pretty decent 38% fire chance with the um, improved dispersion with the last module slot, the aiming systems mod 2. Not no, the artillery, artillery plotter room mod 2. That's what it's called. So don't be afraid to switch to HE. It's very useful in those situations and will in many cases win the engagement for you if you're both bow tanking. So guys, that's my take on the Iowa still a wonderful tech line ship, one that's absolutely still worth the grind in my mind. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys have a wonderful Friday. We will try to live stream tonight. Man, it's been kind of iffy. I know we haven't been able to live stream in the past couple of weeks, but we're gonna try again tonight around 5 p.m. US Central Time on this channel and on Twitch. So make sure you guys come out for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.